So I know that uh, we talked about uh, doing the DIY projects on the acoustic panels. Right now, we are waiting for the shipping of the insulation that we're putting inside of them. So once that gets up, we'll get that video out as soon as possible. So for today, just enjoy a review of one of the products we use in the studio, this tripod. All right, what's up guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about my very favorite tripod, which is gonna be the Flowtech 75. This also comes in 100. Uh, the 100 is a little bit beefier, it's a little bit bigger, it's made for slightly heavier rigs than I'm running. So the point of reviews like this on this channel are gonna be basically to give you short, simple, not very sweet looks at the products and just kind of explain the pros and the cons of it with uh, no BS, just very quick. Okay, so I wanna talk about what this is and why anybody in their right mind would spend close to $2,000 on a tripod, which in this current setup with this head and how much this tripod costs plus tax is about $2,000. That's a lot of money for a tripod. So first we're gonna go over what this is for and what it's not for. Okay, so this is a tripod that is built for flexibility, maneuverability, and speed and ease of use of setup. That's the entire purpose for something like this. What it's not built for is to be a super stable, super heavy duty tripod. Um, this is light, it's also made of carbon fiber, which means that when you have the legs extended, there is a little bit of flex. Now because of this, depending on the position that you're set up in with how wide the legs are out, uh, you can have a little bit of movement. So if you need something really heavy, there are basically two rules of thumbs for tripods if you need something that does not move at all. It basically comes down to structural rigidity and the weight. You want high structural rigidity and high weight. The higher those both are, the more stable the tripod's gonna be. This is not really built to have super heavy duty moving rigs on it like some tripods are. Okay, so now you understand why you might want this let me tell you about how I use it and some of the functionalities that make this thing awesome. We're gonna go ahead and start with a build overview. So one of the benefits of this tripod is that all the legs can lift up from the top like this. There's these three little tabs on each leg and you basically just lift it up like that and it will go all the way out to here, close it down and it's basically set. Like it's freestanding right now. Um, now this has the benefit of not having to reach down, unscrew something, it's very quick. Now you can also do this in any particular height that you choose, so I can do this. It's not segmented or sectioned at all. Another benefit of this tripod is the flexibility for the openness of the legs. There's this little tab right here. Jason, you wanna come and uh, uh, zoom in a little bit here. So there's this tab right here. You wanna push this down, and these are free moving. Now there's a second button right here that when you move the leg, you wanna click that button. It'll launch that tab back up and it will lock in a few segmented, or a few selected positions. So it'll do one there, you have to push down again, it'll do another one up here, and finally closed. Now the reason you would want something like this is for ease of use, for setup and stability, of course, but also because a tripod like this, unlike many tripods, will actually get very, very low to the ground. So we'll go ahead and set this up pretty quickly. So put the feet on the bottom, and that's basically as low as it will go with this uh, ball head in it. Now, Flowtech does also offer their own custom ball head, which doesn't have a bulky kind of bottom screw section in which this will actually go even lower. Uh, you can go basically almost 90 degrees with these legs, and this will get very flat to the ground with that ball head, but unfortunately this little nub makes it not possible with this specific video head. But that little ball head for float, or I'm sorry, from um, Satchelor is very, very expensive. Now, where you might start noticing a little bit of flex is when you have the legs extended and you start getting into these smaller sections. It does, you know, it's, it's pretty stable, but it does move around a little bit. And if you have a heavy rig on here, you could accidentally bump this. It's not a very heavy, tripod so it's not gonna be super, super stable like some bigger tripods will be. Now, there are a couple other creature comforts with this thing that I really like. One are magnetically attaching legs. So these have little magnets in the bottom here so that they, they clasp. And there's also enough room for you to grab with your hand in between the slotted legs. Also something that is somewhat kind of undervalued, I think, is the smoothness of the outside of these legs. So you can really just throw this around even if it's fully extended with the camera on it and you're not having this pointy section or this you know, weird 
skinny tube pressed against your shoulder. It's not a big deal, but it's a bunch of small things with this tripod that really make it stand out. Another creature comfort is going to be the feet on this. So this currently has these flat paddles that are a little bit soft, so they kind of mold to whatever you're on. On a flat surface like this, it's really great, but these do easily come off and become spiked feet, which are great for things like carpet. And they pop on and off quite easily and quickly, as you can see. They're very maneuverable and flexible. So it's pretty great. Okay, now a lot of people will pair these Satchler tripods with a Manfrotto ball head and video head. Now the reason why they do this, quite frankly, is just cost. Satchler does make their own ball head and video head, but that clocks in almost, actually I think it's even more expensive than the legs themselves are, at around $2,000. Now that head has a lot of benefits. One, it is very smooth, it's very versatile, and it's more smooth and more versatile than this head system is. But for my specific use case, I don't really need all the functionality that that, that has. Um, things like it has a quick release section on the bottom video head, so instead of having to do what you currently have to with this one, which is unscrew this piece, you unscrew it, unscrew it, unscrew it, loosen this ball head up, reposition it, reach under screw. The Satchel one just has a switch that you unflick, move, and then reflick. It's very fast, but for me, I don't reposition the ball head often enough to warrant a $2,000 purchase. So I wanna talk about the head that I have on here right now, why I have this head versus the more traditional and slightly safer option, which is this other Manfrotto head, which I think is either, a, yeah, it's a 502AH, and this is a 500AH. Now this one is a little bit safer, because it's closed on the metal slider on both ends. So this whole gray piece is metal and it's got these little protective lips so that it doesn't slip out on or flip out where, you know, if you knock your camera, it's not gonna slide out. This one is secured on one side, but then has a screw, a quick release latch on this other side. But if this isn't down, it might slip out. It's a little bit less secure, but I wanna talk about why I picked this one. One, uh, the whole, name of the game for this specific tripod is speed and efficiency of setup. But two, um, I actually find that those 502s have a problem with leveling. Okay, so these have a little level in here, but I find it almost impossible to get dead center. Even when it is perfectly centered, it doesn't always read perfectly center. So it kind of bounces around the center in there. It's very annoying to tell exactly what's level. The bubble on this, on the 500 AH, is designed a little bit better. So right now it's basically dead center in there and you can actually finally tell exactly what even is for the tripod head. Uh, there's also a, a slight design change of having the kind of pan screw being on the side rather than inside of this one where you kind of have to reach in here, unscrew it. It's not a big deal, but it does help a little bit with the speed of use. So yeah, the difference between these two heads is that this one is a little bit more secure. It's also a little bit heavier duty in terms of feeling. Um, I'm not sure if they're weighted for the same weights or not, but they're both beyond what I would use them for. Um, and then this one is just a little bit more of an efficient shooter. And I think this tripod, that really benefits my shooting style specifically. So this begs the question, is this worth it? Is it worth the $2,000? It becomes hard to really calculate if this has made me $2,000, uh, or at least made my money up and then some. Um, I would say it's kind of not the point. Um, the point is basically to shoot as comfortably as possible and then your own determination on the value of that comfortability is whether or not it's worth it to you or not. For me, I love shooting with this thing. I enjoy shooting with this thing. So to me, it's worth the money, obviously, because I bought it. but you know, to you, you may not need the, the super flexible workflow that this really provides. If that's not your shooting style, then I probably wouldn't recommend it. But for the right person, user like me, who's, you know, really just shooting in a bunch of different directions in a super high paced environment, it's pretty much perfect. All right, that's it for this tripod. If you want to purchase this, there are links in the description down below. Those are affiliate links, they really help us out. All right, thanks a lot.